User experience isn't just about features or aesthetics. What's even more important is how responsive the application is. Nobody wants to wait, especially when using software. That's why the purpose of multithreading is to improve the responsiveness of an application. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Google Docs. One of its defining features is that you can type and save your work at the same time. Now, what enables this feature is that one thread displays the text that you're typing, and a separate thread saves your data to the cloud. I'm obviously simplifying the real operations behind Google Docs, but we can assume that a typing thread and a saving thread allow the application to multitask typing and saving. Now, imagine if typing and autosaving operations were executed on a single thread. Every time you type, you would have to wait for the saving process to finish before resuming your typing. The user experience would become horrible and laggy. I hope this example illustrates how multithreading can improve the responsiveness of an application, but how does it actually work? Here we have a single threaded application that uploads a photo, optimizes it, and then sends an upload notification all on a single thread. When you execute this application, it starts running in your computer's memory as a process. The process contains a thread that carries out instructions for three tasks. The user uploads a photo, the application optimizes the image, and the user receives a notification that their photo is live. Your computer's operating system also runs in memory, and it has a scheduler that decides when your thread will execute. Now when that time comes, it places your thread onto a CPU core. The CPU core first completes the task of uploading the image, then it optimizes the image for the web, which might take a very long time, and until then, the third task is basically blocked. So what we can do is place image optimization on a separate thread. Now the scheduler will rapidly switch between each thread. This is called concurrency. At its core, no pun intended, a CPU core can only process one task at a time. Concurrency gives the illusion that it's handling many tasks in parallel, but it's rapidly switching back and forth between them. So by separating the long running task, the CPU can prioritize running the smaller tasks first. And here's the thing, modern CPUs can make use of multiple cores. One core could be dedicated to executing the first thread, while the other one optimizes the image. This is called parallelism, because the CPU is actually executing more than one task at the same time. As opposed to concurrency, where the CPU is making progress on more than one task at the same time. Now, if multiple cores are rapidly switching between multiple threads, then we achieve parallelism and concurrency. Let's talk about priority. The priority of a thread relies on two key factors, order and length. Threads that arrive first and threads with shorter tasks are given higher priority. But if CPU execution was purely reliant on order and length, the CPU would discriminately run threads with shorter tasks that came first, and continuously ignore threads with longer tasks that came in later. This phenomenon is called thread starvation. Modern CPUs can mitigate starvation by also considering the age of a thread. This factor gives higher priority to threads that have been waiting for far too long. This ensures that every thread gets its fair share of CPU time. Age, length, and order are dynamic priorities computed by the operating system. There are scenarios where you, the developer, might deem a certain thread to be very urgent. The urgency factor is static because you can specify it inside of your code. Let's talk about the downside of multithreading because I don't know about you, but I'm very bad at multitasking. If I'm working on one task, it takes me a really long time to switch to another. Computers can kind of face the same problem. 
When a CPU switches from one thread to another, it doesn't just jump from one task to another seamlessly. It has to save the state of the current task and then load the state of the new one. This operation is called context switching and it takes time. If you have too many threads, the CPU spends more time switching between them than actually executing the tasks themselves. This problem is called thrashing and it reminds us that more threads don't always mean better performance. If every operation is relatively fast, then it's actually better to run all of them on a single thread. So here are my final thoughts. In software development, there is a principle. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. Multi-threading is very hard to get right, and if you don't actually need it, you expose yourself to unnecessary complexities like thrashing, starvation, deadlocks, race conditions, and so on. So before you start creating multi-threaded code, ask yourself, will it genuinely benefit my specific use case? If not, then you should embrace the simplicity and clarity of a single threaded app. If so, then stick around because this course will provide a fairly comprehensive overview, so I will see you in the next one.